Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Oh yes I just love to crochet and share it with everyone. Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have a two in one today. We have the Celtic Weave Stitch. This is called the Celtic Texture Crochet Blanket. You can see it this way and you can also see it in a sense of a cowl. So both are the exact same stitch work. The only difference is, is that the distance in the width is different and that's the only thing. So what I'm going to do today is an introductory um, course to a Celtic weave stitching. It feels awkward in your hands when you go to begin this but once you get used to the motion of the way that things work and you use your fingers to ply the stitch work so that you can see where to go it becomes much easier and I did this last night. So I did the the, the cowl in an evening. So I use Peyton's alpaca blend for this one here and again you can change any kind of uh, dimension that you would like to in order to create this. So once we get moving on this it's a two row repeat over and over and over and in the more information of this video you'll find a link for both of these uh, patterns there so that you can find that. What I will tell you here is that here in the Celtic Texture Crochet Blanket there is a fringe that is wrapped around that does a curl. We have a separate video on how to do that kind of fringe. So what I'll do is I'll link that in the more information of that article as well so that you can do that. So my main purpose today is to show you how to do the Celtic weave stitch using the, um, the same pattern. So it's just a different width in order to create that. So I'm gonna tell you how to change your uh, dimensions and we're gonna be doing that next. So here's what our goal is. This is what the cowl looks like when you're not wearing it. So your head would go in, in between underneath them for sure. But when you actually crochet it, what you're going to do and this is just where it starts is that we're going to crochet in this direction. So the blanket is done this way as well. It's just wider and so what we need to do is get ourselves a, uh, started up onto the first chain in order to create this and then we just go as much as we want to. So this particular cowl is 28 um, inches in the circumference but if you want it to be much smaller you can. The thing that you need to watch for is if I keep rotating it I realize that I saw a mistake during the photography and do you see where it is? I actually did it twice in the same spot of all things. There should be two going over top and usually it's not proper to show mistakes but I think it does happen once in a while and even though that's there I'm not even gonna say that's a deal breaker because if somebody's gonna be counting your stitches as you're wearing it then um, they don't have enough to do in their lives. So you know it yeah it's nice to have perfect but you know perfect doesn't really exist at least in my world. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start with our beginning chain and let's talk about changing the width of that in that part of the instruction. So let's begin the beginning chain. I'm going to be using Peyton's alpaca blend today. It is a wool blend. So just in case you're sensitive to wool you might wanna uh, make a mention of that. It is a chunky weight yarn. So the blanket you can chain 82 or the cowl you can chain 34. You decide. If you would like to customize and make it for something else what you can do is chain in multiples of four and then six. So what you have to just do is you go one, two, three, four. Big enough yes or no. If no then one, two, three, four and then keep on going if you're not satisfied. So one, two, three, four. And once you're happy with the width of this then you have to do six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So it's multiples of four plus six. So let's begin the, be the first row to go across. Let's begin by going third chain from the hook. So one and two and go to the third. Get the back hump of the chain because it'll look nicer and I want you just a half double crochet the back hump of the chain. It's the third one away. And once you do the first one the chain will stay upside down. <laughs> okay and once I'm in I'm just going to half double crochet and you should know that the chain I just skipped over that spot is not a stitch in the future so just don't count that as a stitch. So moving along your chain just half double crochet all the way to the other side and then meet me on the other side in a moment and this is row number one. As you come across on row number one you go right to the end and you turn. You should know that there's a lot of yarn that's required for this particular blanket in the blanket size and even in the cowl and the reason for it is that this stitch is so heavily textured that it uses up a lot of yarn. So I would call this a yarn pig um, to be honest with you. Let's begin the second 
row next. So we're gonna get our second row established and then we're going to be able to see where all of our crisscrossing is going to happen. So let's begin. You're going to chain three and that will count as the first double crochet out of the row. So you're gonna come here next. So you're gonna double crochet the next one. The edges will always have the same thing. We'll always have two double crochets. So in this case the chain three is a double and then the next one is a double. So on the other side the very last two stitches will also be a double crochet. Now everything else in between changes the story. So what I want you to do, let's wrap our hook twice and let me talk this out. So we have the first stitch here. The next stitch is right here. Just follow it straight on down. So the next two stitches here are part of the crisscross that will happen. And so those two stitches plus the next two stitches will be the crisscross. So in order to do the crisscross, we have to come into the front post only and we're gonna come into the third one that you see. So we've already wrapped twice. So you're just gonna jam the hook into the front post of that half double crochet and just stay on the front side. You're gonna yarn over, pull through and then yarn over, pull through two all the way back to the top. So one and two and three. Now we're going to do this again but we're gonna do it to the one right after it. So wrap twice and then just come into the same area and it's the one right after the other one and just go in, pull through, through and through. Now we're going to continue and this time we have to cross over those two. And we're gonna cross over using those two that we identified earlier. So we start with the one that's furthest away from the hook and then we do the next one. This going across on the front side is much easier. So you're gonna wrap twice and you're gonna stay on the front of the project and come into the one that you skipped. It's the first one. And then pull through and then pull through twos all the way back. So one, two and three. And then we do the one right after. If things are being blocked, just move your fingers so that you can manipulate it to see the next one that you have to go into. So wrap and then go into the next front post that's available. And this will be officially the crisscross that forms the Celtic. But we're not done. We're gonna keep on going. So let's go on. We're going to do another crisscross using the next four that are available to you. So you skip the first two and you go to the third one and wrap the hook and do a front post treble into that one. So wrap and pull through, pull through one, two and three and then you do the one right after it. Just wrap twice, pull through, pull through two, one, two and three. And now we come to the two that we skipped over going with the one that's furthest away from where you are right now. So you wrap twice and stay on the front side and then pull through once, twice and three times. And then they do the one right after and use your fingers to manipulate it so you can see the stitches. And so you're gonna keep crisscrossing like this all the way across. So I'll do it one more time because I'm coming close to the end. So I identify where the four are and I identify that the first two I'm gonna skip over and I'm gonna come to the third. So wrap twice and going into the third as a front post and then do the one right after it. And now let's come back and do the ones we skipped starting with the one that's furthest away from where you are which is right here. And then do the next one. They're always in groups of two. Just remember that. So you're gonna continue that all the way across. So put me on pause if you're not all the way across yet and then I'll show you how to finish the final two. You ready to finish the final two? Let's do it. So you're going to pull it apart and you can see that you have what appears to be three. Remember that I said that uh, spacing that you skipped over is not a stitch so you technically only have two. 
So what I want you to do is go into the next one right here and I want you to double crochet. So you're going right back into the stitch work as normal so you're no longer in the front post and do the one right after it. So just make sure that you have two double crochet that are on the edge like that and that would be what it would look like. So now you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number two. Oh, sorry. So let's turn our work and do row number three and four which is now going to be the repeat until you're done. Row number three every time that you do it it does feel awkward and you just gotta be very patient and you gotta use your fingers and move the stitching around so don't be afraid to jam in your fingers in between things in order to move it so that you can have access. So we're gonna start off and I promised you that every time you start and finish a row it's always the same thing. So you're gonna chain three and then you'll double crochet into the next one. So that'll always be the same and the edging on the other side will always finish with two double crochet. So in row number we're on the back side of the project now and you'll see this line will appear on the back side but the front will just appear the texture itself. So to begin the first two here and the last two are going to be straight down. So to do that it's still gonna be a treble but you're gonna wrap the hook twice and you are going to just use your fingers and come in the back side of it. So it's just gonna be a back post treble. So come in from the back and pop it out and grab that post and go out through the back. I'll show several times and then you'll pull through and then pull through one, two and three. So these what you're doing is you're causing this to go straight down instead of a crisscross and you're gonna do its friend next door. Don't be afraid to move things around if you don't see it. So wrap twice and do a back post treble. So come and separate the post out and take it back to the back. Turn it over so you can see it and then pull through and then pull through two uh, and two all the way back to the top. So now we're gonna start officially crisscrossing again but the crisscross is done slightly different this time. So we're going to start you're gonna skip the first two and you're gonna go and play with these two. So they're still in groups of four. They're just in a different spot this time. So let's wrap the hook twice and then talk. See these ones? See how they're leaning towards my hook? Those are the ones that I want. So I want the first one that's closest to me and I'm gonna come from the back side and I'm gonna take it out to the back. So it's all gonna be a back post treble. So you're just gonna wrap, pull through and then one, two and three. And then I'm gonna grab its friend. The, the friend is always kinda hidden. You kinda don't see it there do you? So you use your fingers and separate it so that you can see it. So wrap twice and coming in and go back to the back. Pull through, pull through two, two and two. So those are leaning in the same direction as the last one, as the last row. This next one is awkward to get to and you're gonna play within these two but you're not gonna come in front to grab them. You're gonna come from behind. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and use your fingers and jam the hook so that you get the furthest one away from you. Come in from behind and, and just pick out that post. I'm making it look easy. And once you got that post take it back to the back side. Turn it over so you can see it and then pull through and then pull through once and twice and three times. So now that you got the first one you have this next one. So the mistake that I showed you before I must have not picked up one. So I'm gonna wrap and I'm just gonna come from the back and if you don't need to turn it over you can just move your hook to the back. Pop it through and take it to the back. Pull through, pull through once, twice and three times. And what this is doing is that, that it's changing it so that you have a line that will go over top to make it look like the Celtic weave. So now everything else to the end of the row except for the very last ones right here, these trebles is always gonna be a crisscross in the same manner. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice. You're going to look for the two. So you're gonna skip these two and go to these. It's the same ones that are leaning towards your hook ready to go. And so you'll come from the back side 
and you'll pick up the first one, pull through, pull through two, two, and two, and then do the next one right after it. The next one is usually kind of hidden. So just use your fingers if you don't see it, pull the stitches out of the way so you can grab onto it. There's no harm doing that. Now you're gonna come back to these two that you skipped and you're gonna come from the back side. So wrapping and just move the hook so that you can get in between the stitch work. And then move it to the back. Pull through, pull through once, twice, and three times and then do its friend right here. Don't give up on yourself. This does get easier. It's awkward at first. So you just keep pulling those back. And eventually you've got the last crisscross here before the edge. So just go all the way to the edge. Do not, you can't do anything with these two or these two. So just hold there for me and I'll show you how to finish. To finish, these last two have nowhere to go other than straight up. So you're just gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna treat those as a front post treble, or sorry, as a back post treble going straight up. This is what's creating the braided look. So you're gonna do both of those in a row. So just as a regular back post treble. Then finally the last two are going to each be one double crochet each. This is a turning chain so make sure you go into the actual chain work itself. Don't go into a space because it will stay open. And just go right into the space. And that was completing row number three. So you can kinda now see how things are gonna form and let's begin number four next. To begin number four you're just going to chain three and double crochet in the next. We've already talked about that before. Now row number four is the same as row number two. So you're gonna skip the first two and you're gonna come into these two here. And so you're just gonna start with the third one away which is right here. It's leaning towards the hook ready to go and you're gonna make this as a front post treble. And you're gonna do the next one after it. So it's easy to see when you're on the front side where to go. Now you have to criss cross back over the front side and you're gonna go into these two and you're gonna go to this one right here. It's the furthest one away and make that a front post treble. And this is going to turn the Celtic weave so that it has a beautiful edge. So you do that one plus its friend next door. And when you pull this back over you're gonna see that a nice edge is going to happen and it's going to turn the Celtic weave. Now you're going to do the next crisscross. So these two are the next one. They're kind of hidden behind here so just move it if you don't see it. And then you got these two. So you're looking for the ones that are facing your hook. And do the first one that's closest to you as a front post treble. And then the next one. And then this one. The crisscross just use your fingers if you don't see it. And just use your finger and pop it out of the back end. And just do a front post treble starting with the furthest one away. And then the next one. See and now you can see the stitch work is starting to dive under each other. So then you keep on going along. We have one more to do before the edge. And so we look for the third one away which is this one going straight up. So if you're getting close to the edge that's where you're gonna be. And then do the next one after. And so this causes that one on the edge to also turn inward. And then you do the two that you skipped over. So you have to understand that row number four, every time you do it, you're crisscrossing all completely across except for the very first two and the last two, where the other one, in row number three, you have to start off with the front post treble that goes straight on down. So once you get to all the way to the edge, you're just going to double crochet into your final two. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna recap then row number three again just to make sure that you get it so you can see more being done. And so we'll turn our work and start row number three again. 
So let's recap number three. You're going to chain three and you're going to double crochet in the next one. The first two are going to be straight down. So it's a front post treble straight down and it's a sorry it's a back post treble straight down. I apologize for that. I forgot that I turned it. So it's a back post treble straight on down. Now you're going to start crisscrossing. So you skip the first two and go to the these two and it's facing towards your hook. If you turn it over you can see that. So you're gonna get to the first one and everything is a back post treble and then you do the next one after it. And the tricky part is the next one that crosses back over and it's gonna go into these two. So you're just gonna wrap the hook and just move your hook in behind and isolate those one by one. So you're gonna get the one that's furthest away from you and pull it back and then the next one. Once you get the first one, the next one it's just really easy to see where it is. And you're gonna keep doing that across. So let me show you again. So wrap the hook twice and you're gonna come in to this, these two over here. So you're skipping the first two and you're gonna just gonna isolate those one by one. And then finally these two that you skipped you come from behind and you isolate one by one. So once you get it, pick up, pull it up and pull it behind and finish it and then do the next one. See it's kinda just sitting in limbo on its own. So you'll do this all the way across and as you get close to the end you'll have these two that are by themselves and then your edge. So these two by themselves will just be a front post treble straight on down. So in row number four what happens is that it pulls it back into the center of the project again. And then the very final two is a double crochet. Let's recap number four one more time to make sure you got it. So you can see more and more of the Celtic weave is happening. Let's do number four one more time. Let's recap number four one more time and you're just gonna chain three and you'll double crochet into the first one that you have. So you got two in a row. You're going to crisscross using those four. So you're just gonna start and stay on the front side as a front post treble. So you're skipping over the first two going into the third and then to crisscross you're gonna go back into these starting with the furthest one away and that causes that to turn back into the center of the project. See that? So you get these beautiful edges coming in. You'll crisscross again. So skipping these two and going to these two over here starting with the first one. It's easy to tell where to go because the stitches are leaning towards each other where you need to go. And then these ones are a little more awkward to find so just use your finger and ply them out. So you got two of those that's part of the crisscross. And because this is row number four you're just gonna crisscross right into the end. So skip in these two that are behind this one. If you don't see it just pull it out. So right here is your next one. Okay and then ply the other ones out from the background and do that. So that's all you need to do with this Celtic weave. For the blanket you just go, uh, work your way up until you get to the size that you would like to do. The blanket uh, size is almost 49 inches total and that includes a portion of the fringe that will be done. So in the very the final two here don't forget you're just going to double crochet. So the cowl is worked up to 28 inches and if you're doing the cowl and you, and you wanna finish it to form the circle let's uh, show you how to do that next. If you wanna finish the cowl here's what you're going to do. This is the front of the project. This is the back. You can clearly tell the difference. So fold it so that the back of the project is facing out. So the wrong side is facing. And I want you just to come into the first stitch here and match it to the first stitch on the other side. And I want you just to slip stitch. 
So then you come to the next stitch and the next stitch. Remember slip stitching is always a little tight. So you wanna be a little bit pl uh, flexible with giving it a little bit more yarn as you pull it through. And essentially instead of sewing, you're just slip stitching this closed. And what you're doing is in the finishing the concept all completely. So the cowl can be sized at any size and you can do this and it's neat. And then once you're done this, you just put the um, outside facing, outside right. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so let me just turn it around just to give you an indication of what it looks like. So the cowl would then have a center hole. It would obviously be much bigger than this. And then you can see that it will have all the beautiful stitch work like that. So this is the Celtic Weave um, stitch. Uh, the cowl is available to you same as the blanket. It's in the more information of this video. And for those that would like to do the fringe of the blanket, I'll provide that in the more information article as well. And there's a video on how to do that as well. So that's it for today and we hope you have a good one. And this is the Celtic Weave stitch.